Sydney Edwards there with the great introduction for our third stop on the Freight Waves Road to Northwest Arkansas. I'm Haley Nix here in Memphis, the last stop in Tennessee for us. Joined with me today is Bill Donovan, President and CEO of Donovan Enterprises. And I've got to say, before getting to Memphis, I genuinely had no idea how huge the city was in the role of building the future of supply chain. So I'm super excited to be here with you guys. And Bill, I'm so grateful that you guys let us into your office, your space, your home in Memphis today for this interview. Yep, and we welcome you. So let's dig into a little bit about what Donovan is and who you guys are in the supply chain space right now. You guys are this family run family company that's kind of started from the ground and built now into this logistics empire. Can you talk a little bit about it? Yeah, so we're obviously very proud of our heritage in Memphis. We've been in Memphis a long time. Uh, this business was originally started by my grandfather, but we go back about six, seven generations in Memphis, and uh, we're proud to say that. You know, Memphis is, was, is the cotton capital of the world. We were the largest raw cotton trader in the world for many, many years, and uh, we sold that business in 2010. And we did a really good job insourcing all of our supply chain in raw cotton. We moved about six million bales around the world, and we were spending $250 million a year in, in our supply chain in cotton. And, and we focused on on squeezing $250 million to the fourth decimal point. And at the end of the day, a lot of money fell out the bottom when you're smart about your supply chain. When we sold raw cotton, we said we'd take that model and we can do that for uh, for other, other customers. And so we created this... Uh, logistics company that you're here today to talk about. So if you guys didn't see Melzi Wilson here with us on Great Quarter Gals a couple weeks ago, we talked a little bit about what Donovan is, what you guys do in the supply chain space. And so you can head to freightwaves.com, tv.freightwaves.com to check that out if you missed that episode of Great Quarter Gals. And I want to kind of build on that conversation with you, talking about the future of Donovan and the future of supply chain space. Where do you guys see yourself playing right now with your clients that you serve? And how does that build into goals for the future of Donovan? I think what makes us different um, in the supply supply chain world is, is is much like we did in cotton. You know, we were all over the world. We, we, we went to every country that traded or grew raw, raw cotton, and we looked for the hard things. And the hard things is where, where competition doesn't go. Today, currently, we've got seven operating divisions. We have an intermodal owner-operator division that services 11 ports and 11 rail. Uh, we've got a, a, a global freight forwarding, a licensed global freight forwarding operation, moving freight from U.S. to foreign, foreign to U.S., and foreign to foreign. Warehouse distribution division, uh, with including about a million square feet in uh, Houston, Texas. We, when we were in cotton, we ran six million square feet, so we know a lot about warehouse distribution. Uh, in our domestic transportation division, uh, we're doing you know, LTL, we're doing truckload, we're doing intermodal. Um, we also have a chassis leasing company and container storage facility as well, a nice vertical. We're a licensed custom broker. And, and, and you know, when you look at all seven of our verticals, we're touching every piece mm -hmm. of the supply chain. And I think that's important, you know, because when we see something happening somewhere in the world in one particular vertical, be it ocean, then how does it react when it comes back to intermodal here in America? And so it gives us a unique opportunity, especially in the crazy environment of supply chain that we're in right now, to see and, and, and problems coming, to try to get ready, to try to work with our customers, try to advise our customers that we're in a storm and how do we create the solution? How do you be that kind of calm in the storm solution for the clients that you guys serve, right? Yeah, we've been in a big storm uh, <laughs> for, for a few years. It's been pretty difficult. And I don't, I don't think that that's going to slow down anytime soon. And I really like that point that you guys make about touching those seven different verticals, because if you're a company that plays in that space, you see a ton of opportunity in every single one of those verticals. Do you see one space in particular right now that maybe has some areas that are ripe for the fixing or ripe for the taking, looking for building out some solutions to make supply chains operate smoother? Well, I think obviously when you look at the, the, the supply chain world that everybody watching is, is dealing in, it is truly a storm. And Look, I talked earlier, I, I was we were one of the largest raw cotton traders in the world. We were in the commodity business. We dealt with risk every day. And we got out of that commodity business, we get in another commodity business. And that commodity business is freight. And, you know, whether we like it or not, uh, all of us in the supply chain world are seeing the commodity of freight, be it ocean rates just going up and down, up and down. You've got diesel prices at the highest point in history. That is a commodity. Rail, trucking, ocean. 
documentation. Everything in the supply chain is a commodity, and we are seeing volatility in the supply chain world like we've never seen. We're here to try to create solutions with our customers, to try to forewarn them, to try to navigate through the storm with them. And we may not have the golden bullet, but we're sure going to have an opinion about it. Absolutely. So I know that we're here at Dunedin to focus a little bit on the company, but I also want to take a look at Memphis itself, because this city is poised for just absolute explosion in the future of supply chain, right? There's tons of development going on, a ton of investment in infrastructure and in jobs, and really just in building out Memphis to poise it for being that central point. We know that the cargo airport is the largest cargo airport in the world. You guys are the number five inland port in the United States. Talk to me a little bit about Memphis itself and how the city is growing into that future hub of the so US. I, I, I thought you were going to ask me hard questions. You're going to ask me an easy <laughs> question about selling Memphis. That's the easiest question that you're going to ever going to give me because, as I mentioned, I'm a sixth generation Memphian, and first and foremost, I'm a proud Memphian. And we've got so much to offer in our city with the largest freight airport in the world, with Federal Express, the fifth largest inland rail, the third most traffic corridor in America, be it the Mississippi River bridges. You know, we are one uh, of two cities in America, Chicago and Memphis, with all five class one intermodal rail. And what comes with that? It comes being America's supply chain capital. Mm -hmm. And we're in the center of the country. There's so many good things going on in our city. There's so many companies. Uh, I think everybody on the call knows that we just had a huge announcement in the fall that Ford Motor Company is going to make the biggest investment they've ever made in America with Blue Oval City here in America. And all the benefits to West Tennessee, all the benefits to, to us as Memphians, and quite frankly, the region of America. But when you see Memphis and the way it's growing, it's all about infrastructure. Mm -hmm. You know, we, we are America's distribution and supply chain uh, capital. Our state is working great with us, uh, with this region of, of Memphis, uh, to make those investments to help us grow. Our airport is growing like crazy. Uh, we are so blessed to have Fed, Fred Smith and Federal Express and all the investment going into the airport and all the incumbent supply chain that wraps around that warehouse, from a warehouse distribution, from medical device to, to pharmaceuticals, to, to all types of companies that are based here. And we're really excited about what the Chamber of Commerce in Memphis is doing to support and do what we do best, support ourselves and grow ourselves in the supply chain space and make everybody on that call understand that. So that partnership between the city and the state level, you guys here in private industry, is really, really important. Those public-private partnerships are just absolutely essential to growth, whether that be in infrastructure, industry, et cetera. What type of work do you guys have to do to put in to develop those partnerships? And how does that show outward to other cities as kind of a shining example? Well, the best way to grow is through collaboration. And it's business and it's government, be it local government, be it county government, be it state government. Be a federal government. We're sitting here talking about being the supply chain capital of America. Well, that's a federal, that is a federal deal. That is something that the people in Washington need to understand how important this part of the world is. Mississippi, Arkansas, Tennessee, quite frankly, Oklahoma, North Carolina, just it's spider webs from Memphis out across the United States. And that's what's exciting. We have an advantage. It's a geographical advantage to where we are. What do you think are some of the near-term and the long-term goals for either you guys here at Dunavant or just kind of general Memphis kind of infrastructure and transportation industry as a whole? I would say for Memphis is no different than Dunavant Enterprises. Uh, when I look at our company, we're successful for two reasons. We hire smart people, we get young talent, and we do it with systems. You know, information, we're in the information world, and given visibility to our customers, that's not a service. That's a requirement for us. You have to give your customers the opportunity and visibility to see everything they do. The new generation expects it. Mm -hmm. Well, the new generation of CEOs and C-suites, and whether it's a retailer or a chemical company, they want to know where their product is in that supply chain. I don't care if it's in China, stuck in a, in a port, or arriving or stuck on a boat in the L.A. Long Beach, or on a rail coming from the West Coast to Memphis. Uh, everybody wants to know. So visibility through technology. And when I look at Memphis, are we positioned to do that? We're absolutely positioned because we've got some really good, really good, smart companies here. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I, I don't call them competitors. 
they're good corporate logistics citizens of Memphis, and we're all in this together, okay? We're all in this together to grow Memphis, to grow West Tennessee, and be successful for our customers in the supply chain. So my last question for you this morning, if you're looking at the future of supply chain and you're saying, you know what, there's one piece of technology or one earth shattering idea or one change we can make to the current system that will improve the future of supply chain for everybody, what do you think that that one thing is? Well, I think I just mentioned it. I mean, systems are everything and, and, and visibility is everything. And when we go talk to our customers, we don't want to talk to them about what's easy because everybody does that. Mm -hmm. We want to talk about what's hard, what's hurting you, what can we do? I mean, look, COVID came, no one in the supply chain could ever imagine the disruption that caused. In my opinion, when you look at COVID, what did it do? It brought one word forward 10 years too quickly. Mm -hmm. And the word was e-commerce. And quite frankly, the system wasn't ready for it. Uh, there weren't enough drivers in the system, and whether it's Amazon or FedEx or UPS or DHL, they all deal with the last mile. You can't make their business work the last mile unless you have drivers. And I think uh, our, our, our whole truck driver community is the most important cog in the wheel from an American supply chain standpoint. And, you know, China's now disrupted with COVID. They've got ports shut down. We've got an office in Shenzhen, China. We talk to them every day about when is it going to open up because all of a sudden you have a lull in freight related to China, and when we come out of that, we're going to be in August, we're going to be in the Christmas season, all of a sudden we're going to blink, and we're going to be in past Chinese New Year next year, so I don't see mm -hmm. I don't see the supply chain world straightening out anytime soon. All right, Bill, well, thank you so much for joining us on Freight Waves and being part of our road trip to Northwest Arkansas. It's been an absolute joy to be with you guys here at Donovan and a joy to be in Memphis, and go Grizzlies, right? Go Grizzlies, go Grizzlies. that's Grizzlies. right. Let's go. <laughs> All right. Well, we've got one more stop before we actually make it to Rogers on this road trip to Northwest Arkansas. We'll be in Little Rock with the folks at XPO tomorrow morning, live at 9.30 a.m. Central Time, 10.30 a.m. Eastern Time right here on Freight Waves Now. Make sure that you are tuning in to all of our content here on tv.freightwaves.com. And if you haven't got your tickets quite yet for that future supply chain event, we've got four more days to get that before we get things kicked off in Rogers on Monday, May 9th. You can head to live.freightwaves.com to find all of those tickets. Thank you one more time, Bill, for being with us today. An absolute joy. We're going to toss it back over to Sydney Edwards and Anthony Smith. Have a great day.